A new study shows that most Asian Americans living in New York City are concerned about their safety. Let's talk about it. Yeah, we're talking about a brand new study from the Asian American Foundation, aka TAF. Uh, we got a couple slides for you. Let's just get into it. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. 54% um, of Asian Americans who experienced the hate incident in New York City did not report the experience to anyone. Here's the truth, Andrew. Asians tend to not talk about things that are bad that happen to them. Right. It's a cultural thing. Yeah. Uh, repression, emotional repression. Well, embarrassment. They don't want to make it a big deal. You're going to talk. There's more stats to go. Let's go through it, and we'll give our uh, opinions on it. Let's say uh, one in two Asian Americans in New York City report personally experiencing either insults, harassments, threats, or physical attacks in the past 12 months because of their race and ethnicity. So I guess is that surprising? Not to really, to be honest. If you guys know about the streets in New York, it's just a place where everybody meets everybody. This is not the suburbs, Andrew, where you're sort of like around one type of person, you know, this type of people in your school district. Mm -hmm. You see, you can walk next to a billionaire and somebody who should be in jail for a billion years right next to each other in New York City. That's sort of the nature of the density. Yeah, but I also think, obviously, we're going to get into it, but and we've mentioned on this channel before, a lot of people view Asians as easy targets. So it's like... Let's say you're crazy and on the street and you want to talk crap to one type of person, you're probably going to target this smaller Asian person. Yes, to be honest. because they, it's viewed as like kicking a pigeon versus like trying to attack like a falcon with like really sharp right, talons. Right. That's the mind perception. All right. So let's talk about major issues that affect Asian Americans. Um 78% of Asian Americans polled said public safety is a major problem. And then other ones was treatment of Asian Americans, treatment of their particular ethnic group, inclusion in city government opportunities for Asian Americans. So obviously, David, almost 80% of Asians say that public safety and particularly for Asian Americans, is a concern. Yeah, I mean, I think it's honestly a concern in every city right now, just in America, like... Even in Seattle, it's actually a huge trending topic right. right now. In a lot of cities right now, cities, cities particularly, there's a lot of concern. SF, LA, Seattle, uh, New York, obviously. New Dude. York's a big city. But here's the thing. Crime has always been a concern in New York because there's just a lot of people, right? I mean, that's right. just what the city is, to be honest. Well, New York was famous in the 80s and 90s for having a tremendously high crime rate. And then it got really low, and it seems like it rebounded a little bit, maybe not halfway, but like got more dangerous. Right. So when asked, have you ever felt unsafe or uncomfortable in any of these places because of your race or ethnicity? 51% uh, said public transportation, and I'm guessing they probably mean the MTA subway. And then 29% said they've never felt unsafe. And then 21% said at a local market and in my neighborhood and at my workplace. So Dave, I'm not gonna lie. I read the subway. Uh, a lot of people out there ride the subway MTA it can be kind of a dark place, especially if you're standing by yourself and especially when, you know, if you know a girl who's taking the subway, you got to be extra cautious. I say share the location. If not, get a car. Bro, Don't in the, the latest Robinson, Robert Pattinson Batman, there's literally an old Chinese man getting beat up in the subway. That's the whole opening scene of Batman. Yeah, I think subway. So I just saw that the government, Kathy Hochul, promised like a lot more security oh in the no they New got York the subway. national guard up in there right now oh, as yeah. of right now today they have the national guard in there yeah so is that going to help maybe i don't know because like part of the part of it is the design of the subway it's a little creepy sometimes anyways well it's like from a hundred years ago yeah but i do like to take it it's very cheap uh who is more likely to report to NYPD or law enforcement when something happens? The people who experienced it firsthand or witnessed it. Actually, more people that are witnesses reported, David, and that's interesting. So we're going to talk about that because, like, it seems like Asians, and depending on if you're, like, maybe an immigrant or you don't speak the language, if something happens to you, almost you're less likely to report it because you want to keep that internal. For you're sure, for sure. If you're an immigrant, and let's be honest, I don't know, like, whatever the legal situation is of yourself or people in your family might not have papers. You just don't want to even get exactly. into the system and go through 20 interviews, you know? Exactly. So this next slide is for those who did report it, who did they report to? And most people re reported to a friend or family. And then secondary was local police. Isn't this interesting? But it makes sense because you're probably going to report it to the people closest to you first because you want to come together and figure out what's the next steps. Because a lot of like 
I just know a lot of people don't like talking to police. They don't like filing reports. They don't like having the police come over. They don't like drawing that attention. If their neighbors see that the police come over to their house, oh, what happened? Are they bad? It becomes a big deal. In my experience, and I don't know, you know, it could vary department to department, but like NYPD, FD, NY have been pretty good relative to police anywhere. So you're saying people should not be afraid in your experience to talk to the police Obviously, or Obviously, it depends on the quality of the officer. Some are going to like more pursue the case to the case's end and other people are going to more like try to pass it off. Brings us on to our next slide. Barriers to report for those who experienced a hate crime. For people who personally experienced something, 42% said they did not want to bring attention to themselves. 29% said, I did not know really how to report it. 27% said, I did not know how to report. Oh, 29% said I did not know I could report it. 26% said I'm uncomfortable reporting to law enforcement. 19% said they're embarrassed. So basically, David, all these top reasons are either out of embarrassment or I don't want to deal with the system or I didn't know I could. Yeah, I mean... Is that a legit reason that you didn't know you could report it? Because isn't it like if it's your first time talking to police... Maybe you don't know if that's something you should report to the police. Maybe you're thinking, well, the police are dealing with more serious things. I didn't get hurt, hurt. I didn't get beat up, but something bad happened. But maybe I shouldn't report it. Yeah, I mean, it's tough. I mean, it's almost like kids getting picked on in school. You know how some kids, they do go, and then some people call them tattletales, and then other people, they don't say anything, and they just sort of, like, internalize it mm -hmm. or feel fear. Yeah. Like, everybody has a variance of reaction when this negative stimulus from an external source, like, comes to them. I admit that there is a barrier to calling the police. I think that when you grow up thinking that you got to call the police only for something hyper-serious. Like, there was a... Dude that we saw during the pandemic and he was a crazy dude clearly on substances and he was out in the middle of Delancey Street and he was yelling mean th things. He wasn't hurting well, anybody. He had a Nazi tattoo yeah, on his leg. But yeah. he was like hailing Hitler and he was saying all this crazy stuff. Kind of talking about- leather skirt on. He had a leather skirt on. Yeah, he was talking about Asians, but he wasn't saying it to us. And then I thought to my, we kind of had this conversation. We were like, yo, should we report this? Because we're like, I'm not going to like go over and fight this because he hasn't done anything. And then I talked to a police friend later and I said, yo, what if I reported that? And then the police friend was like, yeah, it'd be tough because if he didn't do anything yet, there's probably not that much we could have done. You know, maybe a guy could have rolled by and driven by and just taken a look at him, but they're not going to like arrest him just for screaming out loud, you know? So it's like, again, there's all these barriers. We don't know, but... I can understand that it's hard for people to pick up the phone. Uh, next one is how many Asian Americans in New York have adopted at least one avoidance behavior to avoid hate victimization? Mm, three, three out of four. That's a lot. Yeah. I mean, especially women, I think. I think guys, too, especially if you're smaller, you're older, it's going to depend on your physicality. Listen, if you're 6'3", you're buff, you're tatted up, you're from the hood, you don't need to run as much risk avoidance Right. You know what I mean? Because the risk is like, people scared of you. Like Asian women were especially likely to say they avoided going out late at night and taking public transportation. David, have you adopted any avoidance behaviors uh, since getting to New York? Yeah, I do think you got to up your street smarts because the streets are crazy. Yeah, I would like just you say- have to, You have to essentially like- up your IQ for whatever environment that you're entering, but it is difficult because I have seen some immigrants, sometimes, you know, let's just say you're from a village in rural Asia, mm -hmm. you come over, unless you get heavy coaching, training, and like, even then some people, they just can't like get it fully to sink into their brain. Right, right, right. It's unfortunate. I've seen it a lot, man. I, I think that that's the part that, makes me feel really unfortunate because I've seen people on the street where I was just like, man, this person just doesn't get it. They don't even know where they're at. They don't know the probabilities. They don't know the risk exposures. They don't know the probable outcomes based on this uh -huh. shifting multifactorial equation of IRL or not. Like, they just don't got it. Right, right, right. And then, uh, yeah, I would say for me, avoiding people, I mean, I definitely just keep your distance from shady people. Like, especially, like, I'm not going to lie, you know, on the subway, when you see someone who's very, very stinky. Now, I'm just saying. And I'm talking about, like, they're crazy stinky. Not just, like, oh, they smell like food. I'm saying they stink, stink. Or they look, like, in bad shape. I just keep a little, like, I just, like, keep a little distance. Just because those people generally, they, they're kind of crazy. 
So that's not like, I'm not avoiding all people, but I just like, you just know how to keep your distance from people who and it's not volatile. just the people in the subway cart itself. It's like the people that are hanging out on the on the different levels. Yeah. Sometimes, sometimes yeah. they just feel like it's just yeah. Depending I'm so, on the stop. Yeah. Man, no, I'm not saying crazy. be scared of everybody. I'm not scared. I just like you know give it a little extra couple feet. Like why not? Like right, that's right, your right. safety. Yeah, I, I really think it depends on like what movies you watch growing up too. You gotta have watched like movies on where people handled people in a realistic way, unreal like. You know, you got to watch movies about the city. Like, right. don't come to New York City if you only watch Disney movies your whole life right, and right, you believe right. that life is like Disney. Like, yeah, it's real that, life out here, man. It's not Disney. Because my thing is, if you don't give yourself space from potentially volatile, crazy people, and then they bump you or something, and then you feel offended, and then you get disrespect, and then you want to do something about it, and then it turns into this whole thing then it's kind of on you because yeah. you're the more sane, smart person. So that's why I say... There's a lot of people that are completely out of their wits, out of their mind. Yes. Like any sort of normative social structure that like holds together like spectrums of behavior is gone. Yes. There's no more barriers to nothing. Like the, their, their borders are not your borders. Yeah, and definitely like... Uh Please think about sharing Ubers late at night, especially if you uh, if you're a female. You know, I think or get the smart. Uber share. Even yeah. the Uber share can't be that. I mean, it's cheaper. You know, it's still better than taking public transport. Exactly. All right, guys. Most of the people who were polled for this survey, uh, because obviously New York has a large Chinese population. No wonder forty percent of the respondents were Chinese. Seventeen uh, percent were Indian. 7% Korean, 7% Bangladeshi, 6% Japanese, 6% Filipino, and then there's Pakistani, eh, Pacific Islander, Vietnamese, and other Asians. So Yeah, well, I mean, it makes sense because Chinese make up by far the primary Asian in New York City. Right. Like, most people are just Chinese. Right. Like, And most people who also replied to this came from Queens, 42%. So it was probably a lot of Chinese people in Queens. Uh, 27% from Brooklyn and 17% from Manhattan. It's tough too because Queens, it's a little bit more suburban. There's a lot more other Asians out there. And then if you're taking a train in another part, Brooklyn, I don't know. It's just like even different parts of New York, different boroughs, different neighborhoods within the borough could be so different. Yeah. So I guess uh, they have some conclusion pages here about like um, people agreed that there needs to be tra uh, training on how to report hate crimes. Like, whether organizations need to talk, whether it's a church or some other type of organization that you're part of, you need to at least talk about how to report a hate crime because a lot of people honestly are not prepared. Um, yeah, they should have that training at uh, local community institutions, whether that's yeah. a church or whatever it like, may be. I know that it sounds as simple as pick up the phone and call 911, but it's like, no, like you see something, you process it, how to process it, and then you talk to them and... You know, it's tough. I've been to a couple Buddhist temples and it's like, man, it's so good for your spirit, especially if you do align with Buddhism. But it's like they're not going to give you that coaching necessarily. Mm. And they're not going to teach you that in school either. Yeah. And then they also say there's a need for reporting accessibility, meaning that just I think when the community all knows that reporting things is the right thing to do, then you feel more comfortable doing it. So in conclusion... Um, to combat anti-Asian incidences, a large majority of Asian Americans strongly supported these resources. Let's just, this is from what the survey said, better relationships with the police, mental health and legal services, senior se services, youth activities, and training on how to report incidences. So David, do you think better relationships with the police would help Asians feel more safe? Yeah, if there was more like famous Asian police officers, but specifically you would need to get granular with it. You would need a famous Fujianese police officer to speak Fujianese with the mm. Fujianese community in their well, dialect. Well, you know what I'm talking about? Like that level of granularity would be necessary to increase the right. engagement. Or, or like, I guess personally knowing a police officer makes you feel more yeah, safe, Yeah, they would right? need to be at public events, at restaurant openings, at, you know, like... Right. Maybe somebody who retired from the police force needs to open up a boba chain or something. You know what I mean? Like just something that's more like an NYPD in the community. NYPD boba. <laughs> if the boba was good, I don't think Chinese would have anything against right, it. Right, right. You know? Um, I guess David, uh, in your opinion, and you know, we've looked a lot into self defense. We've covered a lot of these kind of stories and statistics over the years. I guess what do you think that Asians can do to feel safer in New York City? We all love the city. We love New York, the opportunities, the vibrant, the culture. It's fun. It moves fast. Lots of things to do. 
on the downside, there is this kind of like looming like concern. We're like, all right, just be yeah. a little bit more safe. Let's be there, real. Guys. Let's be real. As far as New York City goes, any city, probably every group has killed Asians more than Asians have killed another group. Yes. That that's I'm I stand on it. I mean, you find us I mean? the stats that prove that. Yeah, yeah, like in just in general, Asians have been killed by probably and, everybody more than Asians have killed anybody in America mm-hmm. in just a macro bird's eye, too. So it's like, of course. I don't know what, listen, guys, you got to talk to your family, man. You got to show them videos. You got to, if you pick like a martial arts studio, try to pick a martial arts studio that has more IRL application, like distribution in terms of how they spend their time and like their teaching methods, right? Mm -hmm. Like, that's what I would say, but I can't like, you know, even me, I can speak Mandarin and I can speak Cantonese, but it's hard for me to fully like get through to a different generation that's from back in the motherland yeah you know? especially if if that's not like you were not related to them or family yeah they, and they don't necessarily have like space some do but not everybody has space in their like hard drive or their motherboard to like accept new programming that's what yeah. i've sat that's what i've seen um i have some suggestions i think that would help i mean this is in the macro is like asians becoming a more significant voting block i do think voting still matters this is still how america is ran so if people want our vote they got to help us out so if we if asians vote then people got to cater toward us and try to convince us to vote for them right uh yeah. obviously better relationships with the community and police and like just not like i think a lot of asians feel like outsiders maybe to the larger community of new york which is a sad feeling because yeah, especially chinese yeah. especially yeah. chinese Be, keep it real yeah. we've been here like Chinese been in New York for over a hundred years. The first Asian to be here. Yeah. And it's still like, you could argue is like, no, it's mostly old. Chinese in New York yeah. of the Asians. Chinese is the predominant Asian. Yes, that is true. There's obviously different groups of Chinese, different subsects, but different immigration waves yeah. that don't necessarily communicate. Even, different economic classes, but regardless it is Chinese. So yeah, I think like Chinese people feeling on the outside, it only makes you more unsafe because you don't even understand other people. You don't understand your neighbors. You don't, you don't know. Other cultures. Necess- I'm going to keep it real too. Chinese don't necessarily feel like they can go to other Chinese too. It's not like yeah, even, and I, it's not like Koreans. They they're gonna feel comfortable going to another Korean. That's true. Even Chinese, they don't trust. There each other are fully. even splits within the Chinese in New York. Even I'm not saying they don't mess with each other, but culturally, if you're from Fuzhou and you're from Guangzhou, you're culturally you just speak a different language. You kind of have different alliances. Yeah, the you communities know, stuff like that. they might have some whatever. So, like. anyways, but like, yeah, staying prepared, staying alert, train some martial arts just to feel more confident. But don't think you're gonna fight everybody. I would still say keep your distance, learn how to it, run away. Uh, be uh, a good. The police witness. really need to be on WeChat. They need to have a WeChat. But then now, see, can they do get a WeChat because they're worried about security information? Right, right, right. Uh, obviously, learn to be a good witness. Have a protocol for that. You know, when you see something, are you videotaping it? Are you calling first? Are you going to try to intervene verbally? Whatever. Think about that. And yeah, I mean, just staying alert and just not, um, you know, obviously I think Manhattan is a little, it can be, feels more safer than, you know, other parts of New York, but that's, that's what it is. So man, sometimes when you're in an unfamiliar place and you feel like you're here for the economic opportunities of your kids you can kind of like be like, I'm not in my hometown village. I'm not around the dialect that I grew up speaking. And it's like, you kind of like put your life a little bit on autopilot mode. And it's like, you're not an NPC, but outwardly I could see why some people feel like you're living life like Mm. an NPC. Cause you're so focused on one goal and it's like, I'm just trying to get by, do my job, yes. you know? And he's like, I don't want to think, I'm tired. And then you're walking yeah, down not, the street. I'm, like, I don't know anybody I did, grew up with. They're not speaking the languages, the expressions, the idioms, yeah. the everything that, like, makes me feel like yeah. who I am, you know? Yeah. I, I could even happen to them, like, if they're just outside of their home province in China, like, even to, like, Beijing or something like that. So it's like, let alone New York City or Oakland or whatever, you know what I mean? I think that that's, like, an overlooked aspect, too. So, listen, guys... I always say it's on the younger generation. If you see something, help the older generation out. You don't got to be their caretaker. Like you're responsible for them on a, you know, on an everyday basis. But when you have that, uh, if you got more knowledge, you have more boldness, you have a better understanding of the Mm -hmm. system, help how you can as quick and efficiently as you can. Yeah, definitely. And I think the more community that you feel like you have, the safer you feel. 
So getting to know other people in your community is important. Anyways, guys, uh, we're going to wrap it up there. Let us know what you thought about this study. Shout out to the Asian American Foundation, TAF, for putting money into this. That's what they're meant to do. They're trying to bring all these stats out so that we can all talk about it and we have something to maybe even use politically. I don't know. But anyways, guys, let us know what are your tips. Do you think New York feels unsafe for you? What are some things you do to feel safe in the city of any city? not just New York. So let us know. Hit that like button. Hopefully this video was useful. And until next time, we out. Peace. Peace.